other of Jesus, who is called the Anointed One. So from Abraham to David, Abraham to David were 14 generations, and from David to the Babylonian capti captivity was 14 generations, and from the Babylonian captivity to Christ, 14 generations. Pretty good, huh? 7 plus 7 is 14. Okay, this is how Jesus, God's anointed one, was born. His mother Mary had promised Joseph to be his wife, but while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Her fiancé, Joseph, was a righteous man full of integrity, but he didn't want to disgrace her. But when he learned of her pregnancy, he secretly planned to break the engagement. While he was still debating with himself about what to do, he fell asleep and this had a supernatural dream, which... I, in my opinion, most dreams are pretty supernatural. An angel from the Lord appeared to him in clear light and said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't hesitate to take Mary into your home as, a, as your wife, because the power of the Holy Spirit has conceived a child in her womb. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Savior, for he is destined to give his life to save his people from their sins. This happened so that the Lord spoke through his prophet, so that the Lord spoke through his prophet would come true. Listen, a virgin will be pregnant. She will give birth to a son, and he will be known as Emmanuel, which means Hebrew. In Hebrew, God became one of us. <laughs> Think about that. God became, it's not just God with us, but God became one of us. That's actually really profound. When Joseph woke up from his dream, he did all that the angel of the Lord instructed him to do. He took Mary to be his wife, but they refrained from having sex until she gave birth to her son, whom they named Yeshua. <laughs> Good to see you guys tonight. Hi, Rick. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go to chapter two. Okay, who would like to read? Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Come on. Okay, Rick. Can you see? Okay. Jesus was born in Bethlehem near Jerusalem during the reign of King Herod. After Jesus' birth, a group of spiritual priests from the east came to Jerusalem and inquired of the people, where is the child who was born king of the Jewish people? We observed his star rising in the sky, and we've come to bow before him in worship. King Herod was shaken to the core when he heard this. And not only him, but all of Jerusalem was disturbed wow. when they heard this news. So he called a meeting of the Jewish ruling priests and religious scholars, demanding that they tell him where the promised Messiah was prophesied to be born. He will be born in Bethlehem in the land of Judah, they told him. Because the prophecy states, And you, little Bethlehem, are not insignificant among the clans of Judah. For out of you will emerge the shepherd king of my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly summoned the spiritual priests from the east to ascertain the exact time the star first appeared. And he told them, Now go to Bethlehem and carefully look there for the child. And when you found him, report to me so that I can go and bow down and worship him too. <laughs> and so they left, and on their way to Bethlehem, suddenly the same star they had seen in the east reappeared. Amazed, they watched as it went ahead of them and stopped directly over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were so ecstatic that they shouted and celebrated with Praise unrestrained joy. Wow! <laughs> when they came into the house and saw the young child with Mary, his mother, young child, they were overcome. Yeah, young child. Falling to the ground at his feet, they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure boxes full of gifts and presented him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Praise the Lord. Afterward, they returned to their own country by another route, because God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Yeah. After they had gone, Joseph had another dream. An angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Get up now and flee to Egypt. Take Mary and the little child and stay there until I tell you to leave. For Herod intends to search for the child to kill him. So that very night he got up and took Jesus and his mother and made their escape to Egypt and remained there until Herod died. 
All of this fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through his prophet. I summoned my son out of Egypt. When Herod realized that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated. So he sent soldiers with orders to slaughter every baby boy, two years old and younger, in Bethlehem and throughout the surrounding countryside based on the time frame he was given from interrogating the wise men. This fulfilled the words of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the screams of anguish, weeping and wailing in Ramah. Rachel is weeping uncontrollably for her children, and she refuses to be comforted, for they are dead and gone. After Herod died, the angel of the Lord appeared again to Joseph in a dream while he was still in Egypt, saying, Go back to the land of Israel, and take the child and his mother with you, for those who sought to kill the child were dead. So he awoke and took Jesus and Mary and were returned to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus, Herod's son, had succeeded him as ruler over all of the territory of Judah, he was afraid to go back. Then he had another dream from God, warning him to avoid that region and instructing him instead to go to the province of Galilee. So he settled his family in the village of Nazareth to find the prophecy that he would be known as the branch. The branch. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so how many dreams did we just have there? <laughs> Extremely important dreams. There's at least three. Three or four, yeah. And think about it, Jesus never would have made it alive. Well, we believe he would have been made it alive because God would have continued to work. But think about it, it was because of a dream. So important. So get this now i don't really know the whole meaning of this dream but i had a lady tell me a dream today she said and this was a lady that came in from north carolina and she said you guys have all seen the chagall windows on the other side right mm -hmm. she dreamed either last night or the night before she doesn't know me from anybody had never seen the chagall windows before she dreamed that Oh, they're, they're the pictures on the other side. I'll show them to you. It's the needlepoint needle on the menorah. Tribes. Yeah. So anyway, she said, um, I was with a lady, and she had the Chagall windows and picture frames right in front of me on the t on a table, and it was Thanksgiving. Is that like, oh, wow. <laughs> I said, oh, <laughs> so she went ahead and told me the dream. <laughs> Who else has the Chagall windows? <laughs> Hi, Brother Tom. Hello. Good to see you. Good to be here. Ah, let's read a psalm and then we're gonna have we're gonna have our sister come on up. I'm excited about this. Let's just rejoice in the Lord because Jesus, our Redeemer, is coming. He was Amen. here and he's on the way, right? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Come, Lord Jesus, quickly. Oh, praise the Lord. All right, let's look at his faithfulness. I've been talking about his faithfulness all week. Let's do Psalm 138 together. And let's read it together uh, out of the Passion would be Wonderful if you've got it. Okay, ready? I thank you, Lord. And with let's, all, let's all read together. And with, and with all, all the passion of my heart, I worship you in the presence of angels. Heaven's mighty ones will hear my voice as I sing my loving praises to you. I bow down before your divine presence and bring you my deepest worship as I experience your tender love and your living truth. For the promises of your word and the fame of your name have been magnified above all else. At the very moment I called you, you answered me. You strengthened me with deep within my soul and breathed fresh courage into me. One day all the kings of the earth will rise and give you thanks. When they hear the living words that I have heard you speak, they too will sing of your wonderful ways. For your ineffable glory is great. For though you are lofty and exalted, you stoop to embrace the lowly. 
yet and you keep your distance from those filled with pride. By your, your mighty power, I can walk through the in devastation, and you will keep me alive, reviving me. Your power set me free from the hatred of my enemies. You keep every promise you've ever made to me. Since your love for me is constant and endless, I ask you, Lord, to finish every good thing that you've begun in me. Father, we just thank you and give you glory and praise for the promises. You are the faithful one. We glorify your name, and even though we don't see everything finished now, we know that you are on the move in every single circumstance in our lives. And, Father, we just give you glory and praise and honor. I thank you, Lord, for who you are, for how you do things, because you are the best. You have the best plan. You have the best ideas. You have the best um, the best way of doing things. Even though every you know, there's times I look at it and I say, what on earth are you doing? But, Lord, in the end, you are always the one that it was right and you're faithful every single time. We're so blessed, Lord, by just who you are and how you love us, how you take care of us. Oh, what a treasure you are. You're the sweetest name I know. Let's just give glory to the one we love. You're the sweetest one we know. Sweeter and more fairer than ten thousands. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, for your holy name. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Holy Spirit. Oh, what a treasure. What a blessing you are. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you that we can we can participate with heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we ask that while we hear Charlene to speak tonight about your land and about what you did for her, we just give you glory and praise and we thank you, God, and we ask that the anointing of the Holy Spirit will flow up all through her as she tells us what happened and how faithful you were in the land. Because <laughs> we know you are faithful and you are faithful and you will be faithful. So, Father, we thank you in advance for what we're going to learn tonight. We ask you, God, to bring understanding, wisdom, and knowledge to us. Thank you, Lord, and we give you all glory and all praise. I was listening to somebody today, and they were talking about knowledge and um, why knowledge without putting it to use is worthless. I can know everything, but if I don't have the ability to put the knowledge to use, it's wor it's useless knowledge, right? And it puffs you up. And it puffs <laughs> you're, you're just full of so much pride, you just stick and, out all over. Have you ever been around somebody that knows everything? Yeah. It's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, well, you know everything. <laughs> uh, but anyway... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a funny conversation about that, but I'll, I will I will refrain. <laughs> um, praise the Lord. So, Father, we ask, here's where we ask for wisdom. We ask, Lord, for knowledge, but, Lord, we thank you for wisdom because then we know how to put to work the knowledge that you've given us. And that's what we need is knowledge and wisdom to work together in our lives, all right? All right, dear Charlene, to come on. We're a small group tonight, but we're a, we're a happy group. And Charlita wants to wants us to ask questions, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Push, the Push the button. Hold it uh, until it oh. turns. Yeah. Yeah. Now you got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So while I'm um, speaking, Charlina. while I'm speaking and going through the slides, uh, you can stop me. And ask a question right. if if I don't explain something or you don't understand or you know want to know more or whatever. Instead of waiting all the way to the end, uh, 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 you might forget what you want to ask. <laughs> um, but I first want to give you just a an overview of um, my background so you'll understand how this fits. Um, back in 1997. It was, uh, it, it, yeah, 97, uh, I had my first trip to Israel, and then the Lord hooked me, 
and uh, I got information about this organization over there that was called Bridges for Peace. And they uh, are, are a Christian organization that work in Israel. Their headquarters is Jerusalem. And um, they do all kinds of things to help, especially the immigrants there. So they got all kinds of programs. And the other arm is uh, was publications. And they publish good news about Israel. And I worked in the publications department. So I was there. I was very, very favored, whereas it's very hard to stay in Israel as a volunteer for very long, more than two years is usually. But I was over there. <laughs> Every time my visa came up, they changed the rules. And so I got I slipped right underneath oh, there. <laughs> it was the, it was the most amazing thing. So I ended up working over there uh, or with them for a period of 14 years. Wow. And I was on I was on the ground 11 and a half wow. because I would come back and forth and there was a period of 18 months at one point that I couldn't get my visa and I worked from the United States. So So did uh, that start in 1997? The 14 years? No. No, when 98. You, actually 98. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so I left in 2012 because I had been introduced to Africa and I wanted to teach in Africa and I couldn't I, I couldn't have enough time off of my work in Israel to get to go to Africa. So I left Israel and, and then for seven years I was doing mission trips to Africa. Um, so uh, this was, I left in 2012. So this is my tenth anniversary. I didn't know if I was. I didn't know if I would ever get back. But um, my friend, let me just explain the situation. My friend, uh, one of my friends, who is a Messianic Jew and lives in uh, lives in in Israel, um, her husband had died a year ago, and her husband was what what I term my rabbi. He was a Messianic rabbi, and he had all the qualifications. He had the degrees and everything. So it wasn't just, you know, calling himself a rabbi. And I went out, and they lived in Gibat Siel, which is just over into the West Bank, outside of Jerusalem. And I moved there for 18 months because I wanted to learn from him. And I had Shabbat with them every night, every Shabbat night uh, for 18 months. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> they were very special, very special. And so she, after her husband died, she asked for help. She said, I need to sell my house and I need some help um, just getting it ready for sale. So I volunteered. Yay. I wanted to go in June, but it didn't work out. And so uh, that's why I was there. So it was a very different trip for me. It was not, I didn't go with a tour group. I went by myself. Uh, I, I I lived with her. And that was one of the reasons I could because it didn't cost so much. It didn't cost hotel bills and stuff like that. So, but my job and my purpose was to help her. So I couldn't just go and do whatever I wanted to right. do. And I, I couldn't go to the Galilee. I couldn't go just where I wanted to go. So I just had to let the, I had no idea how this was going to work out. I stayed three weeks. And um, and it, it just felt very, very different than any time I'd been before. And also within those 10 years, I had changed. Right? Sure. The world Yes. Oh it's changed. Mm -hmm. COVID had happened. All of that, I realized later, was part of what made me see Israel in a different wow. way. And it was it was really surprising to me. So wow. that's part of the story. That's good. All right. So we're in a therapy station. <laughs> <laughs> lights yeah, out just to make the pictures yes. you don't have to turn them all out but just so the pictures pop a little better uh -huh. so this if if i were teaching about israel to people who had never been there and you know 
I would do this differently. That this is a different kind of trip for me. And the Lord had assignments. And the Lord did beautiful things. Praise the Lord. And y'all were part of it. Praise the Lord. Y'all were part of it. The church um, gave twelve hundred dollars oh, to me to distribute as I felt led. And I will tell you, and you will see what you Yay. did. <laughs> so when I, I got a text right before I left, the day before I left, and she said, Charlotte, when you get in, are you going to be ready to go to the Dead Sea the next day? Oh, wow. And I said, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've been practicing the okey <laughs> dress. <laughs> So when you're when you're driving out of Jerusalem, you I don't want to be in anybody's way, but uh, when you're driving outside of Jerusalem, you go into the Judean desert, which is probably where Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. And you look at these hills and you think about that and think of him walking, walking around on these bare hillside. Uh, and we don't know what time of year it was, but. This is a Bedouin, uh, you'll see Bedouin, uh, a small Bedouin community, and if we could make it larger, you would see that it's, it's very poor, very tent-like. Uh, the houses are sometimes made of tin. You, you want know. me to make the picture bigger? I, it'd probably be blurry. <laughs> it's probably not that great. Um, so that's what, when you're leaving Jerusalem, you go through the desert, the Judean desert. And you pass by the date palm. Uh, and by Masada. So it used to be that it used to be that when all the tourists went to this special place at the Dead Sea. It was a big, big tourist center. Yeah. And and that's where you would put the mud on and you would go in the go in the and yeah, and all of that. Uh, and that's where all the tour groups stopped. But they sold that to a Russian group, I found out. And when we, we passed it by, it was it was totally it's empty. Gone? It's it's empty. There's oh. nothing there. I mean you can still see the buildings, but nobody's there. Wow. It has gone bankrupt because of COVID. So the Russians bought it right before COVID, and then COVID happened, and then it went bankrupt. So we had to go further down wow. south. Yes. Um, but w I heard, is it also uh, the level is dropping, and maybe, I don't know if that had anything. Wow. Okay. Let me see. Yes, it's so, very so serious. Sorry, you mean Russian Jews, right? I don't know if they were Jewish. Oh. Wow. I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you, you probably can't see that, but hopefully you have a visual of where the Dead Sea is. So, uh, just look at my finger. That's Jerusalem. And then you just drive this way and then drive. There's a road all the way oh, along this shore. You're <laughs> So, you see how small it is? So we might have we might have stopped earlier at, at, at about here, but then we had to go further down because that's now the tourist center. Wow. Um, that's just unbelievable. Thank you. So we passed Masada. Okay. Uh, we didn't stop there. I've been there many times, but it'll it'll come back. I don't oh, know why here it is. is. <laughs> And there's the Dead Sea. Now, the other place, what you you can't go swimming. You can't walk on the shore. At the other place, it was all crusty, really salty and sharp crusty. So if you tried to walk on the beach in your feet with your feet and no sh no water shoes, uh, you would cut your feet. It was it's that bad. But this one was all soft. It was oh. all soft sand. I'd never been to Dead Sea with soft sand. And you, we went way out. And you, it doesn't matter how far out you go because you're bobbing. You can't sink. You can't sink. But even though you can't touch the bottom, you're bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of the, uh, the, de the density of the mi minerals in the water. It's 33% soft. No. <laughs> so when you lay back, you can't even hardly lay back. 
Does it turn you up? Yeah. No, 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 well, I don't know. Does it turn your skin up quicker? Do you get dehydrated quicker with all that salt? No, I, I, I mean, I your skin is very soft. Yeah, it's very soft when you like come out. Oh, okay. So we were out in it for about an hour, but it's boiling <laughs> like you're floating, yeah. like you can't even keep down. Yeah, no, you cannot. You cannot float. You can yeah. float on your stomach, but you have to keep your head up yeah. because you don't want to get your eyes in that salt right. water. And but you can float on your back and you just fall. Oh. <laughs> this is a so after after we uh, finished with the Dead Sea, we have friends in Iran. Now that is so here we are in the Dead Sea, and we drove up the mountain to Iran, and that's Iran. Okay. Uh, it's a small community, but it's mostly religious. Anyway, when we were driving up. I took this shot, and so you can see this is the Dead Sea, and these mountains that you see on the is Jordan, and this is biblical Moab. So I just I hope you're familiar with this verse. It it talks about the future of the Dead Sea, and Don, uh, it is true that. The Dead Sea has shrunk, shrunk, shrunk really bad. And now there's sinkholes all around. And there's been accidents where people have walked on on that um, area that that is now has no water. And all of a sudden it just gives way. So it's very dangerous to walk on that on that area. Um, but whereas when when I was there, there were spots, when I was there in 1997, uh, there were places along the road by the Dead Sea where you, uh, the water was right up, right near the water. But now it's like half a mile out. So it is, but this is, this is the future. This yes. is out of Ezekiel 47. There was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple. That's the third temple. Yes. Well, maybe the fourth maybe one. The fourth one. <laughs> fourth. Yes. Yeah. This is the millennial yes. temple. There you go. There you go. This water flows toward the eastern region, going yes. down into the valley. We came from Jerusalem, and we go down, down, down to sea level. Um, and enters the sea, which is the Dead Sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. Praise the Lord. So that's the future of the Dead Amen. Sea. And in, I think it's Zechariah, it says they even fish in it. Yes. So, right. so that's its future. And there's no animals alive in it now. And because I had just recently been, we had just recently been through Stephanie's study on Revelation, and I've been teaching it myself in my Bible study group, um, that also colored a lot and, <laughs> of how I felt, what I saw, what I sensed, mm -hmm. which I'll talk about more. Wow. Now, when we got into a rod, a rod is, is just sitting up here, and you can, it's on the edge of the desert, and Actually, this this is the Dead Sea right here. Wow. So we're up above it and to the west of it. And Masada is way over here. And if we could, if, if I could have got it better, there is actually a Bedouin community down there. And a lot of people think of Israel as just desert, but it's not. This is just the southern, southern Israel. That's desert. Yeah. And when I was there, it was Sukkot. It was the end Never of Sukkot. It was the last weekend. So cool. <laughs> and so you saw, I saw um, the, the Sukkot everywhere. Yes. <laughs> and when I was at my, uh, we, we met up with friends, and this was another thing that happened to me. I, God just connected me with friends I had forgotten about. I had no idea I would even get to meet them, and Arad was one of them. There's a community that used to be in Jerusalem that I knew who were Torah teachers, um, Messianic Torah teachers, and they were all there. So cool. 
And so we had all our meals in this large outside uh, suka, breakfast, lunch, dinner. That's what you do in a suka is you, you have your neighbors over, your friends over for any meal and just enjoy yourself. And then this one, we have other friends uh, there, and uh, we visited their apartment, and they had their suit. It's really small. Uh, you could probably get four people in it. <laughs> um, but that was on their balcony, their apartment balcony. And when I was in Arad, I, I had heard about this before I left in 2012. Uh, it was, I think, put together in 2010 or I can't remember, but um, it's called the Fountain of Tears, and um, I wanted to go see it, and they knew the people and arranged a really quick, it was a personal tour, I mean, it was just us, um, but this guy, he's a, he's a Christian uh, Gentile, but he went to Israel in the 70s, and it was a miraculous, he's got a book, I'm going to show it to Stephanie, she might order it, yeah. but uh, he, he miraculously got citizenship. I mean, it was just a, what we would call a fluke, but he got citizenship. He's lived there ever since, and he's an artist, he's a sculptor, and the Lord gave him, gave him this vision of sculpting, uh, of showing through his artistic uh, ways, the last seven words of Jesus on the cross. So there's seven sections here, six pillars in between. The six pillars represent the, the six million that died in the Holocaust. And for each crucifixion scene, and for, it stands for one of the words of Jesus when he was on the cross. And the Holocaust figure stands in front of the cross reacting to Jesus' words. He was really had a hard time with this when the Lord showed it to him because how can you connect the Holocaust with the cross right. and with Jesus? There's, Israel. there's a really good documentary of his artwork that you can see probably on YouTube, but it's it's been on Christian television a couple of different times, and it's an amazing piece of art. And what we'd like to do maybe is in May, it's Holocaust Memorial, and maybe we'll do a, do a yes. thing on it. Because I have uh, better pictures than this. This is just the overall picture. Um, but he he identifies Jesus with the Holocaust survivor or the Holocaust sufferer. Uh, what are, what identifies the Holocaust sufferer is their bald head. So he makes Jesus bald, and in one of these, I think it's when he says, "I am finished." I'm not sure. With his arms spread, he's got numbers on his arm. So it's it's really an amazing thing, and what he's found out is that he's had large Jewish, not Messianic, Jewish groups come and listen to this presentation, wow. and it connects. Praise God. It connects. He Praise has some amazing Lord. testimonies Ooh. about this. So whereas he was terribly concerned and worried that it was going to be a conflicting thing, it has turned out to be a huge blessing. That's so good. And they come up from all over and do tours through this. Uh, so this is the scripture where he got the name, Fountain of Tears, out of Jeremiah 9, 1. O oh Lord, that, that, that my head was a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears that I would weep day and night for the lost of my people. And what he does is he's got a trickle of water coming down these pillars. And then they are channeled outside to seven olive trees. And those tears water the olive trees. So, so uh, I didn't want to take time for that much detail tonight, but maybe sometime we will. 
Now I'm back in Jerusalem, and uh, I had a, this is the light rail that goes right through downtown. It was already there when I left in 2012, but it's extended its route now, um, and it's it's wonderful because the the traffic is horrendous. Oh. It's just horrendous. So this keeps the traffic out of the center of town. And you can get it every five minutes. That's nice. So you're not standing very long waiting for it at all. Uh, but I just want to say that this was one of the things that surprised me this time. Usually when people go to Israel, they got this ethereal thing, you know. I mean, you just, you love Israel so much. You want to be in the land where Jesus walked. And it it's almost romanticized, you know. And it's very emotional. And you can't keep that from happening. And I'm not saying that's bad. And I lived that way for 14 years. <laughs> I never lost my love for Israel and especially for Jerusalem. And it's still there. But I got a different picture, a different feel of it. And again, it was because I changed my views of change. I mean, my life perspective has changed. And my friend, Mark Lee, had a car. And she's a very Jewish driver. And they're very aggressive. <laughs> and I had to, I had to. The first time I was in the car, it was like, oh! <laughs> She said, don't do that. <laughs> and, and so I had to swallow it. I had to swallow it because I never got used to it. Um, and when I was in Israel, when I left in 2012, the population of Israel was 7 million. Now it's 9.5. Wow. In 10 years, it grew 2.5 million. So uh, my friend said it used to be a family was very blessed if they had one car. He said, but now anybody who has a driver's license can get a driver's license, has a car. And uh, it, it's just, and so as I, as we drove through town in the morning or whenever it was, parking's horrendous. It's very expensive and you just pray all the way, please, Lord, give me a, give me a parking place. Uh, but the thing that hit me, uh, I knew it would be different. I knew it would be different in 10 years. You can't help for the technology that, I mean, Israel's love to talk. It's not a third world country. And there were a lot more high rises. Uh, there was a lot more malls, shopping malls, big. I mean, you just, you felt the commercialism. And it, it overtook, for me, the spiritual aspect of Jerusalem that made me sad. And um, so I was grieved. And as we were studying in times, that's, I was just in my spirit. I was trying to see it as it will be when Jesus is reigning. There will be no high rises. There will be no traffic. There will be no light rail. The whole, the whole terrain is going to be changed. And that's what I'm looking for. But because it wasn't that way, it, it grieved me. And I never felt that before. This is just a picture of one of the marketplaces. You can't, I mean, your senses are on high, 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 high. So you want to taste everything you see, you want to smell everything, you want to buy everything. It's just, it's just amazing. Their artistry is amazing, and um, and of course you got the Arab and the and the Jewish. Uh, so this is where your senses go wild. And, so Israel is, even today, a land where bread will not be scarce. That we're in the shuk. We're in the, we're in the public market, the shuk. Okay? Uh, the Bible says it's a land with fig trees and pomegranates, but it also has mangoes, oranges, grapes, and dragon fruit. That's what this is. This is dragon fruit, and this is one cut, cut open. 
So the colors, the artistry of the way they display it. Uh, this is spices. This 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 is a dried fruit cut up in little tiny cubes. You put a tablespoon or so in your in your cup, and you put it either with tea or hot water, and it's an infusion. So good. Yeah. And these are nuts. These are all of it. Olives. Every variety you can think of. This is halva, which is sesame. Um, pastry, baklava. Yes. Uh, candies of all sorts. And <laughs> I was introduced to kanaki. It wasn't new. I just never had it when I was there. Amazingly. But this is kanafi, and they they put it on this circular grill. It goes around about five times. It's got this hair-like uh, noodles uh, topped with goat cheese, and then what's in this pot is syrup, spiced syrup, and they pour it, and they flip it over, and then they pour the syrup on top, then they put crushed pistachios on top of it and it's about eight inches eight inches in diameter and this is what it looks like when it's finished and in this particular place they had soft serve ice cream with caramel sauce that is not traditional <laughs> but it is amazing now i went to the i went to the aladdin um, <laughs> restaurant. The new restaurant in Golden. Yeah, I went there. Oh, yeah, they had kanafi, oh, <laughs> but don't get it. Yeah. Don't get it. It tastes nothing like this, and it wasn't any good. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Oh my goodness. And then we go to French pastry. <laughs> Why is French pastry in Israel? It's because Back in 2015, 8,000 French Jews immigrated Amazing. to Israel because of anti-Semitic attacks in Paris. Wow. And now the market is saturated with French pastry. And I want you, I'm, now I'm going to show you all this. I got through that place without buying anything. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, oh, wow. this is French pastry. Oh. It's like, it's just unreal. Uh, <laughs> How I got out of that. I don't know. I don't know. And then I got to go. Who's this? Joshua Aaron. Joshua Aaron. I really had not known very much about him. But uh, he had a concert uh, at King of Kings. Uh, Jerusalem congregation and uh, so we got to go to that and the neat thing about his band is he's got a guy on part of his band who is a student of ancient um, instruments and he probably played five or six different instruments during this concert and uh, so this is just a picture of this drum is amazing. It's about about like this, and it's shallow. And he just played it with his finger. This amazing wow. sound. <laughs> now, this is my friend Mark Lee that I stayed with, and whose husband died. And I call this blessing Israel because I want you to know where your tithe and your offerings went. And like I said. Uh, Stephanie let me give it to whoever I felt. And because it came from a congregation, I wanted to bless congregations in Israel from one congregation to another. That's awesome. Uh, and so she represents, her husband was uh, the rabbi of a Messianic congregation, and now they're floundering. They lost their leader. And so I gave it to her to, I gave her 300, I divided it into four parts and I gave her $300 and I got also other offerings from other friends. I ended up being able to give her over a thousand dollars. Praise the Ooh. Lord. Praise the and Lord. And 
Uh, I said, you can use it for the congregation, yourself, it doesn't matter, whatever yeah. you want to use. That's so good. So, um, as far as religion goes, I just want you to understand the picture that these, I came, I, I just came back with a really heavy burden to pray for the church in Israel. Um, it's 74% Jewish, 21% Arab, so the Arabs, you can have Christian Arabs, yes. but uh, two only 2% 2 Christian, and most of those are Orthodox, so it's Greek Orthodox, or um, Greek, Aramaic, Coptic, Catholic, yes, Catholic also, Catholic, yes. There is only, and I, I researched this, so they don't have a really good number, but only between 10 and 50,000 Messianic believers. That's it's very, very small. Uh, and they have around 219 congregations. So they need all the encouragement they can get. Yes, Tom? Um, well, and how is the... Um the attitude, the, you know, t t tolerance of, you know, COVID. like, or do they have to really be discreet or? Oh. They have to be careful. They've got uh, Orthodox Jewish organizations that are active in searching for Messianics yeah. so that they can lose their citizenship and be exiled. Yeah. Exiled. Oh. So they have to be very careful. Um, uh, Marley told me that uh, COVID really divided the church, and you know, as small as it is, it needs to be united. Right. Yes. Right. Right. It's never been. Yeah. It's never been united, really. I mean, they are working. They've been working on it, but COVID really did a number on them, and because there was a large portion of the churches that felt like they should get the vaccine. And then there were others that said no, and that really divided them. And one group, and the ones that wanted to be vaccinated or push vaccination looked down on those that wouldn't be. And Marguerite uh, did not get vaccinated. And um, she said, you... We, we saw that in the news, right, how stiff it was in Israel. She said it was horrendous, horrendous. So we really need to support them when we can and how, any way we can. And you did. <laughs> you did. The, other, uh, the others that you, I gave $300 of our money to was uh, the Mott's, Mike and Melissa Mott. They're from Colorado. Some of you may recognize them. Mike worked for Bridges for Peace when I first went there, so that's how I knew. Um, and he is associate pastor at King and Kings Jerusalem, awesome. and his wife is a worship leader. So this is uh, this is her leading worship. Um, so they were shocked. Everybody was shocked, and nobody was expecting a gift at all. So again, it's congregation to congregation. Um, and they, I believe they are the largest congregation in Israel. So when I came back from Israel, uh, this, I, I, the ones, one or two times ago, I can't remember, but I came back to take it and took a Hebrew class. And Melissa was in, was the one sponsoring that or getting that class going with the teacher, the Hebrew teacher that we had, who was a teacher in one of those, the Hebrew schools. Here in Denver, so that's how I met them. Was learning Hebrew after after I'd been to Israel. I was like the guy, and that's how Cindy and Diane. That's how I met Cindy and Diane ten years ago. So they come on Thursday mornings, and so from then I've known Cindy. Yes. <laughs> and you guys know them. Yes, so yes. and so we all know Melissa, and, and and they go to they did go to Faith Bible. Okay. So you we would know them from them. Too. Oh, yeah. really? so, so I I was I knew they had moved to Israel. They had a large family. And so it was, anyway, it was a huge blessing. They don't really, they probably really don't know me, but I was so happy that we could give. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Yeah. I was going to say something else about them. Okay. Uh, um, oh, well, okay. 
And then Bridges for Peace. I gave three hundred dollars to Bridges for Peace, and from gifts from others. Again, it was over a thousand dollars that we were able to give. Um, and um, right now, they have just started a new ministry with Ukrainians because one of their main things is helping the immigrants. Now look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. The immigrants from Ukraine. 2019 was just a little over 2,000. 2022, 12,000. Wow. Uh, Russia, yeah. 7,000 in 2019 immigrated. Wow. This year, 18,000. Wow. Wow. People, I mean, God is using this uh, this crisis to bring them home. So there is a good aspect to it. Yes. Um, and, and these are primarily a Jewish, or is it a blend of well, Jewish no, 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 and no, no, no. no, it has to be Jewish. Oh, it has they, to they, be. They won't let you. you Didn't know. Okay. Live there without. Oh, yeah. 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 you can't, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's great, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's Jewish. And of course, there are Christians that try to, Christian, Messianic Jews, Messianic Jews that come in, and some of them are able to get in under the radar, and some of them are not. So... Well, that's what you gave. Now, my favorite thing, of course, is going to the old city. Um, and these are the old city walls. And every time I go, I quote, I am quoting this scripture as I'm walking. Yes. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For our feet are, I said are, are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Amen. Now we can quote this together. This is going in through Joppa Gate. So as I walk through, I'm quoting this. Let's all say it. <coughs> lift up your heads, O you gates, gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Now you can quote that all you want on this side, but when you're walking through the gates and you're quoting that, and on one of these gates, I don't know if it's this one, I've taken a picture of it before, but like up in here, there's an actual crown. That's so good. <laughs> Relief. A, a crown. Cool. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, this, uh, when you walk through Joppa Gate, you come up and through the Jewish quarter, down these narrow lanes, and I just thought this was so wonderful. <laughs> that was just for me. Yes. <laughs> oh, and so the, the 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 Jewish quarter is just charming. It really is. It has a totally different feel than the Muslim quarter or the Christian quarter. Um, and and you can see the way it's built. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. And you see how narrow. You walk right down this on your way to the Western Wall. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that. Where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, there were, I mean, tourism was fully restored. Praise God. There were, the, the old city was just full of Praise tourists. God. Tourists. Oh, that's yeah. great. Woohoo! And so we pray for the peace yes. of Jerusalem. And one of the words that resonated with me on this trip that I kept hearing the Lord say was comfort. So we need to pray for the comfort yes. of Israel, the comfort of Jerusalem. Yes. This particular verse says that her warfare has ended, but we know it has not. Yeah. Not, yet. not yet. Now, it might have been partially fulfilled in 1948, but... Um, more there is coming a time when it will be ended, and that's when the Lord comes. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, when I had been there back in two, uh, b before, at some point the Lord told me to, when, the, when I was in the Jewish quarter walking through these streets, to quote, read, recite, prophesy the prophecy. And so I, and I knew exactly where I was when I did it. And so I returned the exact same place. And I prophesied this over them. So it says, and this is only part of it. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Prophesy to the breath, thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. You shall know when I have opened your graves, O oh my people, and brought you up from your graves. Amen. And the Lord gave me scriptures all during this trip on his breath and breathing. Um, so we pray that, you know, even the, the this was partially fulfilled in 1948 when they became a nation. And you see the bones. Yeah. And the flesh come together, but he's got to breathe. He's got to breathe on uh, those dry bones and cause his spirit to bring them along. Yes, amen. And salvation is coming to Israel. Yes, amen. And so we'll yeah. be saved. That's right. That's right. So we pray and we prophesy for that. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So you come in down through those uh, little lanes. And that's the residential area. All those little lanes that I just showed you is the residential area of Jews that live in the old city. And this is the Herva Synagogue. Uh, it's, it was just finished, rebuilt. I, I don't know if you may have seen pictures earlier when I was there years ago. Uh, it, you just, it, they just had a commemorative arch. And there was just rubble underneath it. And when they when they were able to get uh, Jerusalem in 1967, they wanted to rebuild it because in 1948, the last standing Jews against the Jordanians was here in this synagogue. And uh, the Jordanians gave them an ultimatum and said, you've got to get out or we're going to bomb this place. If you don't get out, you're going to die. And they stayed. It was bombed. And then you were killed. So they wanted to rebuild this. And so it remained as an arch, just a commemorative arch, for years until 2010, and they rebuilt it. And there was a big divide over it. Um, many people, most people, wanted it to be a synagogue. Um, but there was a group that wanted it to be a museum. And they went out, and it's a synagogue. And if you ever get to get, have you been inside? I don't know. Is it a museum or a synagogue? It's a synagogue. It is a synagogue. Okay. No, I and it's gorgeous. You've got to go see. Yeah. And it's built. I mean, you see the pictures in the 1800s of it, and the pictures now. They have just modeled the same. Wow. It looks. It looks just like the same. That's and there in front of it is the golden menorah. Now this is the one that they have made. It's going to go in the third temple. Okay. It took them 10 years of research. It was finished in 2000 and 2000, 2000, the very end of 2007. It weighs a half ton. It's coated with one millimeter of 24 karat gold, which is 95 pounds of gold. And they just dipped it. They dipped it. And they dipped it for a week. Uh, and a Ukrainian Jew paid the bill. And today it's worth at least three million dollars. And it's moved, they displayed it all over the old city. And it's been in different sites, three or four different sites. And there in the plaza, you see these old first century stones. And if you want to think, can I walk in the steps of Jesus? This is about as close as you can get. Yeah. Oh my and this is 
This is again that plaza, that big plaza area. And this is this is Shore Sheen. Now, Shore Sheen is a shop, and <laughs> it's run by two Jewish brothers, twins, twins. It's Dove and Moshe. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie gave me money to go shopping for the bookstore. So this is an advertisement. You need to go to the bookstore and see all the stuff I bought. So we can buy <laughs> and then you finally come to the Western Mall and this plaque is standing standing there. So the Western Mall is right here. And this is where the women pray and then the men pray on that side. This is the Dome on the Rock. This is not a mosque. It's a shrine. Um, what, what distinction are, are you making? It's not if they don't worship in it. It's not a it's not a house of prayer. Right. I mean it's not built for a house it's of prayer. It's over mosque. a rock. It's over the rock. That this is the mosque. supposedly went up to heaven is where Mohammed went on what's beneath that dome. Supposedly. Right. So it's been here since 600 right. wow. AD. Uh, and this is the mosque here, Malaksa Mosque. And just beyond, you look over and you see the Mount of Olives. So again, here, here I am at the women's side of the Western Wall. And again, this is what surprised me. I love the Western Wall. I've been many, 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 many. And had some wonderful, wonderful prayer times there. But this time, it hit me different. And all I could see was religion. And again, my heart was very heavy. And, uh, and it was really a surprising, a surprising thing. But that is a true picture. It really is a true picture. I mean, you go to the Western Mall and you pray and you have this wonderful high, you know, and, um, but it just hit me different this time. And I think a lot of people that pray there are sincere, but there's a lot that's just religion to them. And you really sense the spirit of religion. It's not relationship. It's religion. Yeah, and I remember a story that was told to me years ago when I was there. And um, it was uh, someone who was walking down the street. I think it was on Shabbat, walking down the street. And uh, I think it was ahead. Maybe it was behind. This Jewish man was walking up ahead. And... Uh, he started talking to this person who was a Christian. And he didn't look, he, he didn't turn and have a conversation with him. He, he just kept walking, but he was talking to this Christian that was behind him. And he says, why? Why have I spent all morning in a synagogue and I don't hear him talk to me? They, they know that there's something missing. A lot of them know that there's something missing. So again, that's the breath of God that has to come and the revelation of God that has to come. Yeah. Now, is that wall, this Western wall, was that part of the original? Was it part of the temple? That's right. No, not the temple. Not the, not the temple. Not the temple, but what? No. It's the retaining wall. It's the retaining wall, but it is part of the original. Right. It's only a portion, just a very small portion of Herod's retaining wall around the temple now. And it actually goes down in places. Way down. Like two stories and, down. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so most of it is buried beneath the ground, but you can take tours that take you down there. Down through there. And you can see the huge foundation stones. And there's great documentaries on that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to wait till you go to Israel. I, I watch them all because I want to go. <laughs> I go. You gotta go. You can read tours there. That's right. You know so much. Oh. Now this may seem like a, 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 an odd place to end this, but I got 
not only to go to the Dead Sea, but one in Shabbat, we went to Ashdod, which is on, on the coast. There's, Ash, there's Ashdod right there. Right there. There's Jerusalem. So we went to the beach on Ashdod. And I found out that Ashdod, Ashdod uh, has, does not have to pay any taxes. Why? Because they are one of the towns. See, this is Gaza. Well, this is Gaza down here. They're one of the towns that is constantly hit by rocket fire. And so in order to have people build up the town, they say, you don't have to pay any taxes. But the beach is beautiful. The weather was perfect. Uh, it was like 70, 68, 70 the whole time. It was beautiful. Uh, but I am, I grew up in Florida. I've lived in Corpus Christi. I've lived in uh, San Diego. I've lived around the beach a long time. And I have, I'm a beachcomber. I'm a beachcomber. So what I found out earlier years in uh, and, and, and each beach has its specialty. So in Natanya, which is a little further up, well, this sticks up near here. In Natanya, I found heart-shaped stones. Haven't found them anywhere else. In Caesarea, which is way up, way yeah. up here. Yeah, Caesarea, you can find the uh, sea glass. Yeah. Sea glass that has sea glass. broken glass that has been uh, beaten by the waves and, and rubbed smooth and they make jewelry out of it. Well, here there was not very many shells, but this is what I found. Now I've got them over there, so afterwards you can look at them. They are bits and pieces of shells that, you know, are colored and they used to have ridges. And the Lord always speaks to me by water. <laughs> this was my water lesson. And he said, this is a picture of someone who's been through the trials of life, been bounced around by the sea and the waves, and been rubbed smooth. And these verses came to me. And I just want to read them to you. All your waves and billows have gone over me. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as God. These are my words. Not just as a survivor, but as an heir and an overcomer. Because every mountain and hill will be brought low, the crooked places will be made straight, and the rough places smooth, including our rough places. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed in us, and all flesh will say it. So that's what he's doing with all of us. And I thought it was such a beautiful picture. So I'll just end with this. Our personal journey with the Lord is greater and more glorious than any true And the therapy we need is Jesus, not Israel. Amen. Oh, I know that's what you want. Amen. Well, Israel is regardless. It is like a life. It is a life journey, and it is not, There's nothing like it. So as I, I, I didn't say this, but I also the the passage about the dry bones of, of applies to us too, and that was one of God's promises before I left that He was going to breathe on my dry bones, and He was going to restore. Something that had gone dead. Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise so he will do that for you too. Amen. That's so hard. Thank you, Shirley. Oh, oh, yes. We're so honored. Ooh. So, um, so um, 
we'll do this again on a Thursday morning soon. <laughs> It'll be a little bit. <laughs> you get to hear it again, but maybe then you'll have more questions too. So we have Thanksgiving this next Thursday. Yeah. Um, so it'll be a little bit. But anyway, praise the Lord for that trip. We're so thank you. Thank you for sharing. That's just powerful. I, the first time I ever went to Israel, I thought, um, I told the story, a little bit of the story anyway, that I just thought I was going to die there because <laughs> it so impacted me. I, I literally pushed ribs out of place weeping. <laughs> That's how bad it was. I had to come back and get put back into place. <laughs> but it was, um, it was amazing. So, Connie, oh, oh Connie, come here. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <clears throat> Come up here, honey. <clears throat> we want to bless you. All that. That's okay. Yeah, she. You want to just sit back there? You could just stay there. Yeah. Let's just do that. But so Connie had um, an accident. Which I didn't know about, and hurt her foot, and uh, just it's just a sprain. She hurt her feet. Her, oh, both feet? No, it's just the left. Just the left. See, in case that it's not broke, but it's clearly sprained. Really sprained. Okay. Well, so anyway, we want to pray for you, but we also want to give you, um, let's just pray that the Lord will give you some good pictures tonight. Amen. And we have a card that we want to give you. And bless you. I had money I wanted to give you. So, there we go. And on the way here, cake jumped in our car. And we have cake. <laughs> so, does anybody else, did everybody get to sign this? I want to make sure we didn't miss anybody. You want to sign it? Sure you go, brother. And we're just saying, if you want to spend a $5 bill, we want to bless Connie because she helps us so much. She really does. She's extremely helpful with every, with so many things. And so, um, um, you can, so, I want to remind you that if you don't have a place to go to Thanksgiving, yes, yes. come on Thursday, noon, we're opening, opening it up at noon, we're trying to eat at one, and trying to eat one. Trying to three. three o'clock, out, okay, so then that's on, th on Thursday, on Thanksgiving Day, so there's no class that morning, and we are talking about <clears throat> Christmas Eve, Saturday night, New Year's Eve is Saturday night. Christmas Eve, we probably will just maybe possibly be open for communion or something like that. You come in and go, like a come and go type thing. Because Christmas Eve is very family. I know I'm going to have a house full of family. So, <laughs> so it'll be kind of tricky for me even. But um, New Year's Eve, we'll plan on, on a prophecy night where you come in and we'll give everybody prophetic words. How does that sound? <laughs> we'll just have fun. We will have fun that night. All right, and we will pray the new year. We're not going to stay. We're, we will pray. We'll stay on midnight. No, <laughs> we'll, no, 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 no. We'll do an early service. We'll have a prophetic and then we'll, people can get home before we'll the crazy. Okay, we'll <laughs> we'll go home before. So let's pray for Connie. So, Father, we just bless Connie. We thank you for her life, Father. What a gift you've given us, yes. and her. Father, we thank you for her life and for how what a blessing she is to us. Now, Lord, we ask for a word of encouragement for her. We want to bless her. We ask, Father, for a picture of edification, exhortation, or comfort for our sister in Jesus' name. Yes. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you glory and praise and honor. <laughs> Does anybody have a picture? I do, but it's a funny one. Okay. Did anybody else have a picture? I've got a funny one. No, okay. <clears throat> Apparently, you're going to get the funny ones tonight. <laughs> I saw a statue of a lion, like what you see sometimes in front of libraries or other things. But on the back were these two buttons, and you would push the buttons, <laughs> buttons, and you pushed it, and the lion would either roar or it would laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. It was good. Yeah. Was good. <laughs> Anyone else have a picture for Connie? Um, praise the Lord. Let's ask again. Father, we just thank you for Connie. <laughs> and we thank you for the picture. Boy, I'll tell you, they come quick when you close your eyes. Father, we thank you for the spirit of prophecy. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the great prophetic. You are Holy Spirit. You are the great prophet. 
messy man. <laughs> you are the one who brings the good word from heaven. So, Father, we thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. You want to see a picture? It doesn't matter what it is. It can be kind of funny. <laughs> I saw a, uh, Connie, I saw a spring. And um, it, just, it just made me chuckle because of all of the springing around your house you've been doing. <laughs> She's been falling. She fell off a cabinet a couple of, um, a couple of months ago. And then, and then you were just fixing your shoes or something and, and, <laughs> and sprained your foot. So, but, I, you know, we just pray right now that the Lord is going to heal that. I, you know, oh, spring and spring. I just, I just realized that that's so connected. So, Father, we thank you right now in advance for healing Connie's foot, ankles, and, Lord, that her feet will be sure and that there will be no more falls. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for the sure-footed Connie. And we thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Father. We give you glory and praise. We call her feet into divine order right now through the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. We say be made whole. Every single muscle, tendon, joint, bone, everything in her feet to work properly through the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Her knees, hips, joints, everything in her legs and up, and that her balance will be sure in Jesus' yes. name. Thank you, Father. We give you glory and praise. And a spring in her step. A spring yeah. in her step. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. So I saw I saw a ship, like an old style schooner, you know, with the big sails and it. And it was sitting on a near a beach, not on it, but near it. And it was it was like the moonlight was shining on it. And there was one figure. Standing on the beach, either looking at the ship or being reflected by the moonlight. And then it started spinning, like it was going up into a whirlwind or something. The person or the ship? The ship was. Okay, the ship. And it felt like what the Lord was saying was that he's riding the ship. I don't know if that means Riding the ship. Riding the ship. There's something being resolved or something being... Praise the Lord. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Correcting the ship. Correcting the writing. writing yeah. The, yeah, that's Getting, good. Getting things back in body. Making it right. That's mm -hmm. good. Amen. The Lord has been telling me plumb line. That's good. Plumb mm -hmm. line. Amen. That same same thought process. Very good. Anybody else have a thought? Anybody else have a picture? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. I think the moonlight light is like intimacy. Amen. Like, Amen. That's good. Yes, very good. Gentle. Light to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Now, Lord, we just bless Connie with a good year. We ask, Father, that as she... Um, ventures into 2023. Lord, we just thank you that the year is going to be good. We bless her. I won't say how old she is, <laughs> but we bless her with many more years. And we thank you, God, for how many years she's already had and how many years we've had her. We are so blessed with her. And we thank you, God. And we give you all glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' name, love you, Connie. We love you. Love you. Yes. All right. And there's All that right. card. Oh, here's the card, my dear. <laughs> I thought for some reason I thought we'd already given it to you. And I can tell her age. It's 29 again. 29 again, amen. <laughs> We're going to stick close to that. All right, let me bless you guys. And there is cake. So we'll have a little bit of fellowship. And produce and brought. And produce. Thank you, brother. Yes, sure. pumpkin pie. Oh, pumpkin pie. Woohoo. Okay. So may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his face upon his counter. Whoops, I skipped some. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you. And may he may your his shalom be of all over us. Father, we thank you for your peace upon our homes, upon our our um, property. Upon our businesses. Yes. Father, we thank you for the provision of heaven that is flowing to these your people. 
because you are always faithful and good. We give you glory and praise right now. We thank you, Father, for Israel. We bless her. You said to pray for the peace of Israel. We pray for the shalom of Israel right now. We bless Jerusalem, and we say, Lord, may your peace be upon her in Jesus' name. We ask God for your peace and your power to run through that land and run through this land. Lord, may religion fall we, in Jesus' name. All, in fact, even upon all of us, may, may any religious thing that's in us just fall to the ground in Jesus' name. We ask, God, that we be people of relationship with you. We thank you, God, that you're, you want a relation, a, such a close relationship with us. And we bless that. We thank you, Father, and give you all glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' holy name, if you'd like to give, the offering is back here on the table tonight. And let's just enjoy a time of fellowship. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless you guys. <laughs> thank